We are back on Inside Politics. Our guest today is former Tennessee governor and Nashville mayor Phil Bredesen. Uh, governor, much like running for mayor, you had to run twice to governor to get elected. You ran in 94, lost as a part of the Republican Revolution. In 2002, you, you ran and won. What was the difference? What, what, what made it different for you to win in 2002 where you didn't in 94? I think there were a couple, couple of things. I mean, first of all, you didn't, have, you didn't have the Republican Revolution going on. I mean, it would have been, in retrospect, a very tough year in 94 for anybody, um, anybody who's a Democrat. Um, I think I was more sophisticated, had more of a track record in Nashville. You know, that's the difference between those times was, you know, the library, the sports teams, I mean, a bunch of those other things. And then third of all, just, uh, you know, ten care was such an issue, and it's hard to have a better resume for dealing with Tim Care than you know than I had, and so I think that I think that really helped uh, helped as well. You did do a lot of, in your first administration dealing with the state's revenue situation, right. particularly out of Tim Care. You had right. to make a lot of tough decisions, right. tough cuts. How personal did that get for you? Because you had to take a lot of heat about it, even having protesters in your office. You went out and bought a yeah. McDonald's one day. Uh, but it, it seemed to me that was very difficult on you from a personal point of view. You know, it's interesting. We were talking earlier about my first campaign with Bill Boner back in 1987. That one was so rough that nothing subsequently has ever <laughs> I mean, It's just like that totally inoculated me against any of those kinds of, any of, those kinds of things. In, in your first term and in your second term, it always seemed there was something going on economically that you had to go right the ship. Right. Second term, you had the entire economy come right. pretty much collapse nationally. Are there any regrets of things you wanted to do either in your first or second term that you didn't because you always had to be dealing with the fix it situation? Um, no, I mean, I, I mean, of the various kinds of people who could hold those offices, I'm probably a fairly good one when that's the problem on the on the table. I mean, it's you know, you just naturally you know got some understanding of that, and and uh, because I'm not. You know, I don't. And I don't mean this is drawing. I'm not a professional politician who's been in it forever and it's their whole life's work. It frees you up a little bit because if you do something wrong and you don't get elected the next time, it's not the end of life as you know it. Um, so you've got, you know, you've got those, you've got those possibilities. Um, I wish that I could have fixed ten care in a more constructive way. Um, I mean, it, in the end, it just ended up we just having to use a hatchet to the thing. Um, I know you're but staying, I tried. I know you're staying out of the things in current politics, yeah. but do we need insure Tennessee? Would you, I know you? Oh, I, I I believe we should. I believe we should do that, and I've certainly said that. Um, certainly said that publicly, and I've told told the governor that. Um, it, to my mind, there's always this issue of w we're paying for it. I mean, the taxes we're sending to Washington are being used for that. The, the borrowings that are taking place to fund fund government, where you know our citizens have their share of it. And I don't know. I I find it awfully hard to just be, for sort of political reasons because I didn't like the current president to sort of say to my citizens, it's okay for you to pay a few billion dollars to the federal government, but I'm not going to let them send any money back here. One of the things that you were very good at, both as mayor and governor, was dealing with crisis situations. I'm thinking about the tornado in Nashville in 1998 and numerous tornadoes and other kind of dis natural disasters that occurred in Tennessee while you were governor. There's no manual for that when you're an elected official. Did you know going in that you would handle those well? What prepared you to be ready to be the, the comforter in chief role? Well, I, I mean, I, I mean, my whole personality, we've known each other for a long time, is just kind of you know, relax, let's just think a little bit about this thing, don't shoot your mouth off and so on. <laughs> and that that's probably there's times like during campaigns when that's not the best <laughs> when that's not the best approach as I've discovered. Um, but uh, in, in a crisis, I mean I think that's that's what people are looking for. They want information. Um, they want somebody you know who's calm and you know appears to be in charge and doing things doing things right. One of my great regrets in life is that I wasn't the governor of Louisiana when Katrina hit. That would have been the ultimate <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate opportunity to, uh, you know, to manage that sort of thing. One thing you did start in Tennessee while you were governor is the pre-K program. Mm -hmm. um, there was a study at Vanderbilt recently that sort of indicated that really doesn't seem to have much long-term impact. But I think you're still a believer in the program. There appears to be efforts on the Hill now for Tennessee to start rolling that back after that. Yeah. Now, I'm still a believer in the program, and, and I, um, it, it clearly has kids better prepared when they get into first grade. And so I think what we're doing is what everyone's told me is, you know, where we're falling short then is then what we do in the, you know, in the period uh, in the period after that. But, you know, having kids you know, from different kinds of backgrounds enter 
you know, kindergarten and first grade on as even a keel as you can put it. I, I mean, I, in my mind, that can't be a bad thing. That's got to open up opportunities. One thing you're experiencing in your life right now, as I am, is the wonders of being a grandparent, speaking yes. to young children. What do your grandchildren call you? Pop. Pop. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's mine too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but isn't that wonderful? I mean, it's it's yeah. it's a, in some ways it's like reliving raising your kids, but it's so much more fun. Well, everyone told me when I was about to have grandchildren, oh, you're going to love it. And I was going to say, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I am. I'm sure I'm going to love them very much. You can have no idea. I mean, it's <laughs> like I, I mean, I swear I'm more attached to those two kids than you know than I was to Ben, and uh, it's probably not. Probably not literally true, but how do you want to be best remembered as mayor and governor? I just I think as somebody who left, as somebody when you left office, people's expectations about what government was about and could do were better than when you came in. I assume you're not going to be running for any more offices, but you continue to plan to be active in politics and how. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't plan to run for any more offices, and, and my, my involvement in politics is very limited. I mean, it's, you know, I endorse somebody in the mayor's race and, um, and, uh, uh, and so on. But, uh, you know, I think it's okay. I'm no Cincinnatus. I mean, I spent 16 years in it, but, but I think it's okay to have a life and take a piece of that life and devote it to this and then go back and do other kinds of things. I think that's what founders had in mind. That's what I'm doing. Governor Phil Bryson. Thank you for coming in today. We had enough material where I could talk to you for two shows. Thanks. And thank you for joining us on Inside Politics. Hope you can be back here again for a future show. If you can't get up politics in the meantime, go to the News Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. There's a new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye.